Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about increasing our online presence and what you should do as far as increasing your online presence, why it's so very important. This is Sharon from Dr. Business Builder. So we know that it's so important to be online, right? But what's the purpose of being online? It's to make connections, right? You want to build connections, you want to build relationships, and you want to take a potentially cold market, make them warmer, and hopefully be able to sell your products and services to them, right? That's the whole idea about being online as far as a business goes. So think about it just as you're on social media. Have you met people? Have you established relationships? You, you are if you're on um, social media, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, YouTube, um, Facebook, there's ways to meet people. LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn may be business to business, but the bottom line is you're able to establish relationships on social media that you didn't have a year ago right? If you're doing it, if you're there and you're present, it's the same idea with your business. You want to be able to build relationships. Well, how do you do that? You know that you have to show up. That's the bottom line. You're definitely going to have to show up if you want to do this. Now, either you can do it or you can hire someone to do it, but you have to show up. Do you have to show up every day? Probably not, but probably a good four or five times a week you want to show up. Now, what could you do? You could do things simple as biz of quotes, like inspirational quotes, right? That's always something good to fall back on if you don't know where to start. Start there they're easy but what people really like to see is um, also your life your personal life you know what book are you reading think about that how do you spend your time out of work what what about at work what are you doing um, show the back back you know what, what goes on behind the scenes so people want to know about that show them your different employees if they're um, open to that different products how how you get your products anything to do with your business it just brings people from the outside in a little bit closer right they feel um, warmer to you is the bottom line and that helps build relationships so you're going to be doing um, posts throughout the week they can be funny quotes humorous quotes whatever you're laughing at bring it in share it with them you know if something happened at, funny at work you can do a you know mention that in a story definitely articles and stuff but they definitely get dry there's no doubt about at it. I think that articles are a great way, you know, as far as content, but I can tell you that they're dry, so be very careful. Or if you found an article that you like, maybe summarize it, put it in your own voice rather than just putting a link to something. And as far as trying to sell directly online, it's really hard if you're just going to do those direct links. People don't usually respond to them. That's probably why people are scrolling through. So what can you do? We know that we should be good offering good quality information about 80% of the time and then selling about 20% of the time. So that's a good thing. If you have a shake, maybe not just show a picture of the shake, perhaps show a picture of you at a park drinking the shake, those types of things. You get the product out there, but it's not so obvious that you're selling, all right? So that's important to do. Now, do you need a website? I definitely think you guys need a website and I can help you build a website, but that's besides the point. Have a website, but if that's not what you have right now, fine. What you do need though are landing pages. Why? Because you don't want to send a direct link to somebody, right? Because that's they're probably not going to buy that way. Give them a landing page. What a landing page would be is a link to a page that tells about the product, but more so how that how that product is going to solve their problem right? You want to try to always have solutions. It's not that you're going to sell them a product, you're going to sell them a solution. So think about that. And a landing page can do that. Websites are nice, they're great for information and you should be found on webs. But I think even more importantly are landing pages because landing pages are what, what goes on to sell. Now, in there, do you have to sell? No, what you're really trying to do is actually build up an email list. It's hard to sell initially when you're first meeting somebody unless it's like a really great product. That's just not how it happens. So you want to build an email list, right? You want to get them on your email list and you do that by having a landing page. You're going to have to do an opt-in or a freebie so that when they come through that link that you're going to provide, they're going to go to a page, they're going to give you an email and perhaps, you know, you're going to talk about, like if you're talking about cats, I don't know, um, just off the top of my head, you know, three, tip, three tips to get your cat to sleep at night so that they're not running all around the house or something like that. Something that's pertinent to the product that you're ultimately selling because, and basically everything has to be coherent. You can't be talking about cats on your social media post and then bring them in and talk about dogs because you're going to lose them. That's the bottom line. So everything has to be consistent from that social media post that you're selling that's going to make them click and go to your landing page. The landing page has to be similar to the post. And, and colors, yes, 
wording, yes, but the actual, like, what you're trying, what the end product is going to be. And then definitely the freebie or opt-in. Think about who your target market is. So they like cats. What do they need? Therefore, you give that opt-in and you get their email. Now, same thing with the email. It's going to be a slower process, but you can't just say, oh, here are my products. I'm having a sale. Yes, you can offer them a discount. There's no doubt about it, but you want to always be providing good quality information. And how do you do that? Well, you can simply write blogs. People don't like blogs. They take forever. And truthfully, they should be about 1,500 words. But I will encourage that twice a month, okay? And then in between, if you're, you know, something happens funny at work or you just want to write, to, you know, write, then you can do a 300, 500 word post. That's absolutely fine. Now, if you don't like writing, dictate. Take your phone and dictate into the phone and then just, you know, transfer it by Bluetooth or whatever up to your desktop and get it into your website is the bottom line or get it into a post. A lot of times on Instagram, if you'll see, I've done a video, I can connect that. I'll, I'll put a card right there so that you can take a look at that. You could, people like paragraphs and paragraphs on Instagram. It seems like it's not just one or two, like a couple of sentences. People like to read, you tell a story. So if you don't want to be typing that all on your phone, you know, what you could do is actually dictate it and put it onto your phone. So that's another good idea as far as making this simple. Remember, we're so busy, but we have to be present on social media. So what are the, the trips, the tricks, the tips to keep, you know, your, your online presence going? So these are all ways to do that. So with that 1500 post that you're going to do, because you're going to try at least once a month, right? You're going to break it down. You can do smaller posts with that that go back to that. Um, they're links. They're called internal links, and that's going to help your website search engine optimization. Also, it's going to be providing information. Again, more posts. You could take a paragraph of that and put it into a social media post with an image relating to that. And then see if you want more information, here's my post that I did. You should be able to do a, an, first of all, when you're doing your blog post, do an outline. And prior to you even writing, you need to search the keywords. Say you are talking about cats sleeping at night. You want to Google that. When you start Googling, you'll see that other words come up. Notice what they are. Screenshot it. Make sure that goes into your post. Get a Chrome extension called Keywords Everywhere. And, you know, type in, you know, ways for cats to sleep at night. And then notice that everything else that's being related to that. You want to look at the high quality, uh, high traffic, but those are hard to come by. And you'll see like numbers by them. You see numbers by them that are like $7, $8. Those are going to be hard to rank for because people are advertising and they're spending $8 a click to get those, key, you know, to get links on their site. So go down the list and look for words that are maybe just 100 searches a month, whatever it is, you'll start grabbing those people slowly but surely, and this does not require paid traffic. This just requires you showing up and being consistent and getting content and, you know, putting it out there. So you want to do an outline first based on those keywords, and then from there determine, you know, you're going to do, um, you know, either dictate it or get a blog and also a video. You can, if you're good with video, which I encourage you or get someone else to do it, or um, put a, like a PowerPoint together and kind of put some fun music in and maybe some funny things going on in the video to keep people's attention. But you definitely should be doing video. YouTube is a great channel to be on as far as uh, cold markets. The two that I normally talk about, if you haven't heard me already say it, is Pinterest and um, YouTube. And the reason for that is people don't go on Facebook to search. They'll scroll to see what their friends are doing, what their family's doing, but they're not on there searching about cats, right? They're just not. How to cat sleep at night. You may find it on YouTube, you may find it Google searching, you may even find it on Pinterest, you know, what people are doing with their pets, because there's a lot of blogs on Pinterest. YouTube and Pinterest, they're search engines, so if you are going to spend any time with social media, those are two platforms that you should be taking your content and posting to. Just because you post on June 1st doesn't mean that you can post August 1st. You can take that material and post it again. That's okay. Pinterest, usually, if it's on the same page, they don't allow you to upload it. It'll say this has already been uploaded, but you can use different images in a post as well. When I do my blog post, if you haven't noticed, there's um, like five images all relating to the same thing. Sometimes you can even put code in, not sometimes, you can put code in, um, unlike the HTML code, so that the image doesn't even show up. But when people go to pin, they'll be able to pin those images. But you scrolling through it, you're not going to see those images. So these are all things to keep in mind as far as social media. Yes, I ultimately believe that you do need a website, okay? 
because it's important. You want your website to show up. You don't want re you, you, you'll see reviews or whatever, but you want your website to show up is the bottom line when people search you out. Landing pages. Get your landing pages together and think of a good idea for a freebie or an opt-in so that you get people's email. That's how you take a cold market and you make it into a warm market. It's consistency. You're going to develop relationships. When people think like, you know, they're in a conversation, oh, you know, my cat's having a hard time sleeping. I know it's kind of far out, but this is what I thought about on this video. So here it is. Um, oh, yeah, I read an article and there's this product, you know, that they can take and um, and that's how word of mouth goes. That's the bottom line. People will think of you, but you have to be present for them to think of you, right? So that's pretty much it. Remember, website ultimately, but get that landing page up. Get it. Definitely you need a freebie, an opt-in, all right? And then you have to be present on social media. Do funny things about cats, you know? People love those cat videos, and it's okay to share from other pages. Just be consistent and put it in your own voice. You don't want to copy exactly, right? You never want to do that, but you definitely want to take your voice and add it. This is your business. You have a lot to say. There's no doubt. Otherwise, don't bother being in business, right? You want people to buy your products and services, then get out there and show them what they're missing if they're not buying it. Show them the solution that can help their problem, all right? So um, you'll be getting emails from me. If this is the video that you guys are watching, because I'm doing a couple things with this video, do me a favor, um, look at the description below. There's some freebies there for you if you're interested, and you'll be hearing more from me if you sign up. And this channel is all going to be about increasing your online presence, and we're going to be talking continuously about tips and tricks to build your online presence. All right, guys, have a great day, and I need my glasses right now to sign me off here, and 